This is James Holder for Apple TV in association with Matt Jim Marbell. I'm in Miguel's gym in Brixton today. With me, I've got none other than professional boxer, Mark Prince. What's happening, Mark? You all right? I feel good. good. I was going to say, I caught a bit of your training today, Mark. You look in tremendous shape for a man of 52, right. man. I've got to say, <laughs> you look in great shape, Mark. You look in absolute <laughs> tremendous shape. Yeah, well, we'll get to 52 soon, <laughs> man. That's not a race. How old are you now, I'm 46, bro. Wow. 46, all man. Aside, I'm feeling, man. yeah. Feeling like that, I thought I finished today and I thought, you know what? I need to sign my autograph on someone's chin. On a brand name cruiserweight fighter's chin. Sign this autograph right here. That's how I'm feeling. How can you prevent the British public from seeing my skills at this age to inspire people to know they can do anything, man? It's never finished, it's never over. Depends on your desire and determination. And I desire to put this right hand on anyone who's got a belt, chin, in this country. First to take care of them, to establish myself as number one cruiserweight, and then we can move on. Now, the last time I saw you, we was in Brighton at the university. They were doing all sorts of testing on you, um, some oxygen machine testing, yeah, some, yeah, some endure that. high endurance testing, yeah. some punch testing. What was the sort of the, the, the results of that day, Mark? If you can explain that. Uh, it was awesome that day. Um, I got an opportunity to do what the board didn't even ask for. The board to get your license, you need uh, to get a brain scan, to have a medical, and they have a meeting with you and they talk with you. As long as you meet all that criteria, you're fine. But because I thought, well, maybe the board are trying their best to do all they can to look after fighters that are, are, are probably a bit further on in age than the usual fighters, I thought I'd go to rest their mind and go and get the stringent test where you said. So after that, they gave me a covering letter. Now, this isn't a usual protocol for the university, but they suggested to me they would like to give me a covering letter just so they can let the board know, whoever I'm taking the results of the test know, that. I come up with results amongst the elite athletes way beyond um, guys my age and um, I passed every test that they set for me and got great grades and they would recommend that the board give me my license to fight because there's no reason uh, physically and medically why they shouldn't. So I handed that in and the Southern Area Council were over the moon and um, they credited me for going out there and doing that and whilst that was happening I had two fights. Um, um, Chichiven, Vilecki and some, some other guy, but no disrespect to him. Am I right in thinking now that your main goal and your main purpose is to regain your British licence and try to test yourself against the, the current crop of British cruiserweights? Oh, that's, that's always been my desire, to come back and uh, take care of business, um, but I've been prevented from doing that. Um, have you had any sort of brain scans, Mark? Is there yep, any sort yep. of, have, have you passed yep, every pass sort of medical brain scan, test, so to speak? Passed on medical saw their uh, British board on board doctor um, who makes the last major important judgment on fighters like he should be and he also recommended that I have my license so this has been the first in this case where the, the board has been split the southern area have recommended I get my license and the stewards of the board who haven't interviewed me haven't spoken to me haven't shown any respect to me as a fighter who have been paying my way, paying for my license, paying for giving them the juice of my fights when I get paid um, and helping to run their organisation like other fighters on board do. I haven't had the respect from the stewards to be able to even speak with me, just sending me letters telling me they think it's in my best interest that I shouldn't fight under a British licence. Um, and that makes no sense at all. Well, when you look at fighters like Bernard Hopkins, who are still flying their trade at the age of 51, held a world title in his 50s, does that sort of make you question it as, a, as, as what, what they're saying? I mean, is it a case, you want it to be a case by case thing, not a you're this age, you can't fight anymore situation? Yeah, I, I, they, they made it clear at the, uh, the meeting, the Southern Era Council meeting, that this was a special case. The way they saw this, uh, my condition, the way I've held, upheld my physical shape and upheld boxing in and out of the ring. They thought I was a special case and at the time I was 44 going in for this meeting. This was two years before now and um, they were stipulating how they had to look at this case as a different than the normal cases and they could not judge me upon that. They had to judge me upon me as an individual and what I've done and accomplished and they've seen that I'm in great shape and there was no reason why 
they should withhold my license. I mean, you're obviously very fit. You're, you've got all your faculties about you. You're no very doubt. strong. You're very sort of stubborn-minded in, in what you want to do. Yes, sir. Was, am I right thinking you only suffered one defeat as a professional boxer? One defeat at the time I was 18 and old. I dared to challenge um, Darius Mikulczowski, who was at the time a 38 and old fighter with uh, probably just short of a, a few KOs of the 38 wins. Um, I knew I was out of my depth. Um, I knew it probably wasn't my time, but I just felt at that point in my career, I had nothing to lose. Um, the most, that, the worst thing that was gonna happen was I lose, and what's that? that, that uh, there's more I'm gonna gain from a loss sometimes than a win. So for me, that's what happened. And I got stopped in the eighth round. Uh, I learned a lot. I recognized that one of the major things was weight. I was always struggling to make light heavy. So that's an advice to fighters out there struggling to make weight. It ain't worth it. Um, you have a loss because you were beaten by the better man. Don't have it because of the weight struggling. Um, and I'm not saying that I would have beat him on the night, but what I would have said that would have given me a different display on the night. I would have been able to display more strength. In your 29 wins, one defeat, you've left boxing on a high now. Yeah. Personal situations and circumstances, the tragic passing of the son, Kyan Prince, yeah. and then the work you've done with the Kyan Prince Foundation and charity beyond that. Is that the main reason that you chose to get back into boxing and try to fight competitively, Mark? Is it just, was it something, a way of channeling maybe what you was feeling at the time? Um, I think I had to deal with a lot of what I was feeling at the time, and I dealt with it in a different way. I dealt with it with things that was not expected of me. Forgiveness, love, displaying that love to other young men who have been gangbanging on the streets, stabbing other people. I was displaying it by supporting other parents that were grieving like me, grieving with them, uh, doing whatever I could as I'd been on the road ahead of them, unfortunately, to try and help and support them, pray with them, cry with them. Um, so I'd been reaching out to a lot of young people. and So that was my way of, of dealing with this. But there was something missing. Throughout the journey, I recognized this business was so dark and cutthroat. It was like, where are the real helpers? Who cares? How can it just be the people that are suffering that cares? There must be people in authority that cares. And I found out, where are they then? If there's people in authority that cares, if people know me and I'm on camera and I'm on Sky One and I've demonstrated my skills on School of Hard Knocks and, and I've got awards from the Prime Minister who, who I said, it's not awards that I want. It is the support and help from someone in your authority to be able to further the work to reach more young people. I spoke to Boris, you know, he, he gassed about, you know, what he, that they couldn't do anything about knife crime. And I said, well, I can, I've been doing it. Let you get the praise and I'll continue the work. But you need to support and help, give the resources. He said he'd contact me back. You don't hear from these people. So what happened in the end, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna fight back the only way I know how. I've still got this skill of fighting. My determination hasn't gone. My warrior mindset hasn't gone. So I'm gonna go in the ring and polish that up. You've seen guys that have used to be a plumber, used to be all types of trades, and they've gone in, dusted off their tools, and started working again. At first they were a little rusty, but next minute, because they were great in the beginning, or they had potential to be great, they carried on and continued to show that goodness. So I've come in the ring, and it's almost like I began this new me with this terrible trauma that's happened to me. My, my dad dying five months after my son, me burying my stillborn baby, me burying my 15 year old son, my mum nearly losing her life, blood clot, couldn't walk, going through all of that. It t I didn't allow it to break me. I cried out to God who gave me the strength to get up, stand on my feet and fight back. And from that, I've seen that people are inspired by it and I've been an inspiration without even trying to get up and be. I just wanted to survive. I just wanted to, to, to come from this and do something for my son in his name. And, and so much more have, have come of it. So it's sort of shame on anyone that tries to stand in the way of that and try to stop the public from seeing the continuation of this story play itself out and see the greatness of how you can come from adversity and do wonderful things for other people. Because this is about service for others. This story, were talking to me, but it ain't about me. 
People can see their self in my story. The kids see it. I saw up to 650 kids last week in three different, Hull, Luton, London, and all those children, so many Insta, so many Facebook messages, so many teachers, so many young people, crying, hugging me, expressing how they feel as well. Just young men telling me how great the message was, what they got from it. Young girls telling me how, because it's not just knife crime. I, I talk about life itself and how to come back from life and how not to give up and how the young people could be seeing life in such a small way when life is so much greater than that and the greatness is within them and stop trying to adorn the outside when the greatness is on the inside. It ain't about all these different brand names, it's about the brand name of the Most High shining from in you and in that turn you be kind and you love and you treat other people like the way you want to be treated. That's the message. Young people crave that message, they want it, and it's changing and turning around lives. So why try and put a spanner in the works when I'm trying to raise my profile so I can share that message? Because I see a lot of people getting platforms to share garbage messages that bring young people's lives down, that are just drugging up their self in the papers for that, and their brand name, I don't see no one stopping them from getting anywhere. So why stop me from doing what I want to do? I don't think that's right. I don't think the British public like that, but, but they haven't, they're not having a chance to voice that. And IFL London have given me a chance to voice that, and I respect that, and I appreciate anyone that's going to give me a platform to, to air what I have to say. Because ringside should be all over me. They were all over me before. ITV, BBC One, mainstream TV should be all over me. They were all over me when the bad news hit me, when the trauma hit me, when I was crying on TV, when I was on a breakdown. That's good for TV. So why ain't this good for TV? That's the question I want to know. Why ain't the rest of this story good for TV that is turned around? Come and watch me, ITV. Come and watch me, BBC. Come and follow me, Sky. Come in the schools when I go in there. See what happens with the teachers and what they say. See what happens to the authorities and what they say when I'm working. Come in Tottenham when I'm talking to the kids on hanging around on the streets that don't have a lot of opportunities. See how they feel about the message and see the little that you can do. And I'm calling out to fighters. Come and support this thing, man. Come on. I'm doing work in the schools. Come with me. So tell the kids about your life and where you came from. You don't understand how powerful this is. This is way more powerful than belts strapped around your waist, holding up, me, 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 I'm the best, I'm the greatest. When your legacy's all done and gone, bruv, it's just a fight and a win at the end of the day, my man. There's greater things done when you touch someone's heart and you change their lives than you just put some money in the bank, King. Put some money to lay your treasures up in heaven. That's what the Most High says, where moth, rust, and thieves cannot take it away, my friend. Lay your treasures there. And that's what I'm doing right now. Because on the death of my son, he made me realize that life's more about me and money, bruv. And that's what this world's just getting the kids to think about. And it's not just about that. Listen, Mark, I'm looking forward to covering the rest of this story and the journey. Yeah. I hope you get your license, because I think you're, you're very determined and very capable of holding a license. So I think the people were held accountable to at least sit down and explain to Mark Prince why he's not being granted his license. He just wants to get the message of what he's doing out there a little bit more and keep on giving back to the sport he loves so much. Mark Prince, thank you for talking to Michael TV, sir. I wish you the best of luck and have a good no Christmas. Doubt. Enough love to you, man. Enjoy the holiday period, folks. Get straight back to business straight after. Bless up, bro. Good luck, Mark. Nice, brother. Thanks a lot. IFO London TV, bro. This is the game. Whoa. Respect to IFO TV. Love how they come. From the bottom to the top. Keep on going, IFO. Much love to you, man. Giving the real fighters airplay. Giving the real fighters a voice. Respect to that, man. Ta Ta